So welcome back everyone. I've got a very exciting video for you today. We got the lithium battery installed and the first heat exchanger. This is a 200 amp hour lithium battery that just was tailor made to fit under Mrs. W's seat right here. The lithium batteries are so far superior to the lead acid batteries. When you think about lead acid batteries, that technology is what? Well, they have them in Model Ts. It's, it's time for us to move on. These are, they're more expensive. That's why a lot of people don't put them in, uh, but in the long term that they're not. They're actually, they're a quarter of the weight, roughly. They're a quarter of the size. They um, charge faster. They, you, they, you're talking four, four or five thousand cycles, you're charging, discharging versus uh, 400. And you don't have to, you don't have these massive battery banks, and they don't vent, so you can put them inside the pa passenger passenger compartment, and on and on and on. So what I did is I just mount I built a uh, aluminum track and bolted everything in there to hold that in there, and I got a great big heavy duty um, ratchet ratchet type of strap in there to hold that down. So it's absolutely secure; it can't go anywhere. So here's the cool part. So this is the uh, what do you call this thing? The remote battery switch. This is from Blue Sea. This is all marine type of quality stuff. And so what this will allow me to do, it'll, it'll be a disconnect for the battery. It's got that really cool spring switch in there. And then it will hook to this little guy right here, which I'll put at the, at the command center somewhere that's not yet been established. So that if, let's say for example, I have a dead battery on the engine, on the crank side, um, it'll all this will all be isolated so I can I can flip this and turn this on I can use the lithium uh, to start the car just as an emergency backup so that's really really cool the other thing is you'll notice that this is four individual cells these are three volt three point something three six nine twelve uh, and the reason why we went with the individual cells is that if one of these goes bad or comes out of balance for example we can simply pull it out and swap it out at a quarter of the cost of what the whole battery would be. Because that's usually what happens is not, you know, in a battery, the whole thing doesn't fail. You know, one plate or one portion of it will fail. And the whole thing, it takes the whole thing with it. It's like the old, you know, those old Christmas lights. One bulb goes out and, and they all go out. This way, you know, again, we could just take and simply uh, un, un, unplug that and put a new one in again for the quarter of the cost and then it have we have this really cool I don't have it hooked up yet but this will be a little monitor that goes to the command center that will this is a cell voltage monitor alarm so this will tell us tell me exactly the condition of the battery on all four individual banks and if something needs balanced or we're having a problem with something and, and I'll know exactly what's going on with the battery by just looking at this little LCD monitor so super super cool uh, the best part though is the uh, heat exchanger so I'll show you how I tied all that in let me take you into the engine compartment here so what I did is essentially we're, we're using the, the hot water that the engine is producing to help with that hydronic, hydronic furnace. And so what I did is that this is the, uh, the line coming out of the heater core here, and I grabbed onto it and I, and I cut, took that line off and I put spliced in a 90. So what, what we've got is we've got two heater hoses running all the way back. I, there were 30 feet. 30 feet of it, 15 feet each way back to the heat exchanger under here, going through heating that and then going back and just continue. What I've done is I've extended the loop to the cooling system, uh, essentially 30 feet. We're gonna use that heat and let's go underneath here and I'll show you why. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be challenging here, but I've got this just in here temporarily. So with zip ties, I'm just te testing everything out. So here you can see the, are the, the two three quarter heater lines and I just started putting my clamps on. So everything will be clamped on with these nice rubber coated clamps because you don't want hoses rubbing on stuff. If they rub on stuff, they'll get holes in them and you can, it's gonna happen at the worst possible time in the middle of the night. So you wanna make sure you do this right. So as you, you'll see the zip ties over there and that was just me doing my prototyping, but that's how everything will be finished right there. Now over here, here's the cool part. <laughs> it's just so, so tight in here. So the hot water is coming out of the heater core, right? And it's coming into this Rixon heat exchanger. So it's going in here. These are a series of copper plates and then it's coming out this way. So, and then back in, back into the engine on the, um, on the cool side. Now, if you look on top here, you'll see, maybe <laughs> so tight, there we go. You'll see that there's another, two more ports right there. 
Now what, what's going on here is that this engine, these are hot, these are 200, 210 degrees right now, the temperature of the engine, and that is heating up this heat sink right here. And so what's gonna happen now is the S-bar, <laughs> I wish I had a lift. The S-bar furnace right here is gonna mount, and we'll, we'll, we'll cover this more in detail here, is gonna mount right there, okay? Right there, <laughs> so, so that's gonna be the, the, that's going to be producing all of the hot water that will come out of the jacket into this here out of here and up into the furnace and the reason why we're doing this is that we're, we're we it's preheating all the water so it's just giving us uh it's giving us three ways uh to to heat the van we can heat it with the engine we can heat it with the electrical element we can heat it with the with the s-bar unit right there so this is, uh, I know it's hard to explain once we uh, get it all put together, I'll do a better job. I'll get it jacked up where I can get the camera into here, but I wanted to give you a quick update on how, kind of how all that works. But this is just working beautifully. These are hot. Um, I had to add about an extra gallon of antifreeze to, uh, to accommodate all of the hose, uh, but and this, this is producing, this is hot. So yeah, it's really hot. So it's just working perfectly. And then we'll get these guys all clamped up here like this nice so nothing's touching and nothing's rubbing and it's gonna be really really cool so I wanted to give you a quick update on on that okay so what's next in the adventure van so what's gonna be next is uh, I'll probably put a 15 to 20 gallon water tank fresh water tank along here um, probably so, something like that I've ordered a 1500 watt uh, magnum inverter charger and that whole system will go over here so we'll have AC power that's what's going to hook directly to the lithium battery uh, so we have AC power so we can plug in stuff and coffee maker and, and all that sorts of things when we go camping uh, now there's uh, some questions that have come up um, uh, 200 amp hours is not enough I've, I've heard a lot of statements like that well it is enough for us I'm not building uh, this huge lumbering uh, motor home I, I don't want that what I have found with this thing this transit van is I like it so well that it's become my daily driver I don't think I've driven my truck since I've owned it uh, it's just so much better in so many ways. It gets 18 and a half miles per gallon. It's got ridiculous power. It's fun to drive whenever I go anywhere. I can take multiple people. We can have comfort. We have room for gear. Everything is dry inside. And then even, you know, having the bed in the back so and the furnace, it's just so superior in so many ways. Now, uh, also what's gonna be coming up this spring uh, I'm on the list uh, to get is we're going to have four-wheel drive put on it. There's two companies uh, in the country that do it. One is Quigley in Pennsylvania and the other is uh, uh, Quadvan in Portland, Oregon. So I'm on that list to have that and done. And that's going to be, oh, I can't wait for that. That's going to be so nice and so necessary for up in here. Um, so with that in mind, the other thing I'm going to do is, yes, I'm going to be insulating the van, but I want to run all the electrical and all of the plumbing and all of those things first, get everything all fitted and checked out, make sure it's the way I like it. Then we can do the insulation. Then we can do the nice carpeted or upholstered panels and, and make it a little bit warmer and cozier inside. But I, this is very minimalistic. I, I'm not interested in this huge cabinets and plywood and, and all that stuff and turning this thing into this huge, heavy uh, recreational vehicle that's that's not what I'm going for I want a good furnace I want a good solid power system we'll have some the flexible the new flexible solar panels up on top to keep the battery charged up but just a really re four-wheel drive a really really solid rig um, that's not too heavy uh, that we can use dual roles and I can use it for a daily driver as well as having um, comfortably taking you know three or four people uh, camping so that's kind of where I'm going so if you're wondering why I'm not doing this or why I'm not doing that it's you know what what you may be ha have need of or what you would do to yours is not necessarily the same so that's why you may if you think some things are too small that I eat the battery bank you know so so of course, to each his own so um, and things change you know I, I have an idea of what I want now and is that that could change and and things may become different but I don't think so I think I've this is my third van uh, and I think I know what I want by by now so that's it hope you enjoy the video thanks for watching and next time we'll be installing that s-bar lord willing we'll see you see you on the next video